everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to day three of our Liab Learning Challenge. I hope you guys enjoy this. Enjoyed the past two days where we talked about empathy, building your empathy skills, and also yesterday where we learned how to build and nurture your own professional network. So we're going a bit technical on today's topic. We're going to be talking about how investing works um, from a friend of mine who is a part-time lecturer in Ateneo, and she's also an associate at RCBC Capital. So she knows really how <laughs> investing works because that is her job. Um, but before we go on and give her the floor, I wanted to remind everyone that they can ask questions at any point in the comment section of the video and then we'll address them at the end. Um, and to those who are new here, um, forgot to introduce myself. I'm Deirdre, I'm the founder <laughs> of Liab. And Liab is an e-learning startup focused on helping Gen Z Filipinos transition into working life better. And why we started this challenge is because there are a lot of different things that can help you transition into working life. Part of it is developing the right soft skills for it. Part of it is building a network for, for your professional life. And part of it is knowing about topics like this. Um, even if you're not going to pursue a career that's related to finance, um, it's also very useful to still know how investing actually works. Um, and if you're possibly going to get into it someday, if so, that's something that you want to do on the side personally, um, which Nina, our, our teacher for today, will be um, giving us a bit of an idea how it is applied, not just in working life, but also maybe in your personal finances as well, if that's something that you want to get into. But I think it's it's still a good concept to learn, even if that's not something you're going to pursue later on, which is that extra knowledge of knowing exactly how investing works is also very, very valuable. So while we're waiting for the rest of, I don't know, for to give a bit of time for the people who still want to catch this session before we begin, just wanted also to give you guys a quick reminder that Liab Virtual Career Fair is happening next week, starting Monday. So if you haven't registered yet, please do. You can register as an attendee. So an attendee will just be attending all of like the, the talks and the panel discussions um, that we will have to each and every day. But if you register as a job seeker, that opens you up to more um, opportunities because then you'll be part of the resume database that we'll be sending out to, to the different companies interested in, in hiring for interns or entry-level positions during this time. Um, and second is you will have access to mentorship sessions with the different mentors that we're curating for you guys. So there are two options, um, two ways to participate you can be an attendee and just like, you know, watch um, the different talks we prepared or you can be a job seeker and let us know, um, give us your resume and then we'll try to expose your resume to as many companies as we can. So I hope everyone who wants to catch this session is already in the live. So without, um, you know, much more wait, I will pass you <laughs> off to Nina now, and then I will see you guys later for the Q and A. All right, hi, hi guys. Good afternoon. I hope you had a great Sunday. So now I'm talking about how investing works or investing 101. Um, a lot of this will apply, especially to those that will get their salaries already, and you you will always wonder how to spend their salary. Um, of course, the first month salary that's something you can. Spend spend wildly because that's something that you know you can enjoy the the hardship that you did for four years so i recommend that the first month you just spend it wildly but the next month you should know how to invest and save and this is what the lecture will be all about so to give a brief background of myself so actually my major in college is bs management of applied chemistry it's like a double major of management, the business side, and chemistry. Um, Dirdri, Dirdri and I were high school classmates. Um, so we came from a science high school. So in high school, I was all about science and to chemistry and everything. But in college, everything changed, okay? And, and when I entered Ateneo, I didn't think at all I would enter into a bank. And in my senior year, I realized that 
business or management is actually a passion of mine. So those are things or realizations that I didn't know when I was young. I thought actually I was going to be a doctor or a chemist or a scientist. So surprise, surprise, you'll never know what will happen to your life. And recently, last year, I also finished my master in finance in IE Business School, which is in Spain. So I did it as a part, I was a part-time student. Um, I did it with while working. So my classes were every Saturday, but every day I had something to pass or to submit. So it was quite a hard and difficult job to do, but I'm done. So that's out of the way. And it's, it was a great experience. Um, so my work experience, I started as a management trainee in Union Bank. When I graduated, I knew what I wanted is business and management, but I didn't know which faction or which part of the bank I want to be part of. And being a management trainee is a great way to be able to explore different kinds of departments in a bank. So I was, um, they put us in sales and operations and treasury and trust um, and lending. We explored everything. And after a year of training, you get, well, the, you apply for a department and the department chooses you to be part of their team if you did great in that rotation. So after that, I spent three years as an account officer for commercial banking. Uh, I did lending to small and medium enterprises that are not exactly conglomerate level, but not really as small as, um, as SMEs. So it's just, it, we're like in the middle market, okay? So I get to, to land to different kinds of industries like mining, steel, et cetera. And I learned so much in that job. Um, in 2018, I decided to switch careers and decided to go to investment banking. Um, I entered the boutique investment house, Ampersand Capital, but surprise, surprise again, after three months, it decided to, to close. But luckily enough, um, RCBC Capital was there to hire me. They were pirating me at that time, so it was just timely for me to move there. So currently, I'm an investment associate in RCBC Capital. We handle capital markets such as bonds and stocks. We issue initial public offerings or IPOs, and we do issuances of bonds. So bonds is um, borrow borrowing from the company borrows from retail investors. And you get interest from that. And I'm also a part-time lecturer in Ateneo. I teach cost accounting or budgeting. So the question is, why invest? So I have four points for you here. First is that, you know, your investment or savings will always serve for something in the future. It will serve as your future wedding, family, retirement, or even an emergency fund. And you'll never know uh, how you can utilize this in the future, okay? And it's important. Second, it takes into account the time value of money. So the time value of money means that your 10 pesos today will not be 10 pesos next year. It always, it's worth less because the value of money increases as the time runs, okay? There's inflation that we have to take into account of. And third is that it helps you to manage your finances well. If you know that you need to invest or you need to invest a specific amount of your money, you get you take it into the side already. And then you manage the rest of your money in terms of your expenses and your wants, and you get to save. And it's really like, it's self-fulfilling to be able to have something that you put in the side and you can just always look at it. That, oh, this is something I keep working hard on. Okay, and part, I believe investing is a life skill. So your future employer will be impressed if you know how to handle money, especially if you're applying for a bank. And um, investing is actually, it shows self-discipline because when you invest in something, it means also that you have commitment, not only to yourself, but your future family or your family now. Okay, so how to save? One of the tips I have been in saving is to follow the 50-30-20 rule, okay? And it might differ based on your allocation of your expenses, based on your salary that you get as well. But the 50-30-20 rule is something like this. 
50% for your needs. So what are your needs? Okay, your rent, your utility, your bills, your food, your transportation, etc. Your gas. Okay. 30%, you separate the 30%. 30% is for your leisure or your wants. The 30% is the money you spend on your weekend getaways, okay? Your weekend parties, your travel, your clothes, your phones, okay? And 20% savings. The 20% savings can be divided into two, okay? It depends on you how much you want on your investments and your savings, but 10% of which can be just put in the bank, okay? In a time deposit or something that you can withdraw anytime, okay? And the other half will be put into investments. And I will discuss later what types of investments you can actually put your money in. But before knowing where to invest on, I want to focus that investing comes with risk. Okay, it's not exactly that what you invest, you will get it 100%. Okay, because the higher the risk, the higher the return. Okay, so the first risk of investing is market risk. Okay, um, if you follow stocks now, you might have noticed that it decreased a lot from where it was in January. Okay, January, the index was 7.4. Uh, the index is the value of the stock market, okay? So just to give you a picture, okay? It was 7.4, and now it's just 5.2 or 5.3, okay? So it decreased a lot. So there's a chance that the value of your money at 7.4 in January is now only 5.3 if you withdraw it now, okay? Second is default risk, Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, stocks and bonds are based on the company's performance, okay? So, for example, if you buy a PLDT stock, there is a chance that PLDT will be bankrupt and it won't be able to pay you anything in the future, okay? Third is there is inflation risk. Inflation risk means that the value of the money will increase more than your investments, okay? And that's why sometimes you need a little risk in order to curb this risk. And also for it, there's portfolio risk. It's always recommended to not put all your eggs in one basket. It's always, to have, it's always nice to have different types of products or investments in your portfolio. So if you have bonds, you should also have stocks, you should also have time deposit, you should also have an insurance, etc. But first, you also have to know Second, you also have to know what type of investor are you. Each one of us have different types of risk appetite, and we have to determine that before knowing where to allocate our investments. So first, there is an aggressive investor, okay? An aggressive investor um, cares about the money, but um, wants to take risk in order to get more money in return. So the, an aggressive investor is willing to risk all of its money into risky assets and um, cares less if they will get less of the money they have. So they're willing to risk it, okay? That's like a gamble. There's also the one in the middle, a moderate, aggressive, or conservative type. The moderate, aggressive, or conservative likes risk, but can be also um, look at it negatively. So it just wants a balanced portfolio, okay? It wants its portfolio to have a balance of fixed income where I can get um, recurring income. And it wants a portion of it in risky assets where I have a chance to get the higher return or double my money, okay? And we also have the conservative type. The conservative type doesn't like risky assets, especially in a period like this with COVID and all where all the markets are going down. Um, this conservative type are happy because their money are getting fixed returns as they wanted to, okay? And uh, in my experience in the bank, most of the conservative investors are the older generations. So these are the boomers who actually just want their money and in fixed income assets, which are bonds or time deposits. So what are the major types of investment products? 
okay? So first, we all have um, managed funds, okay? Managed funds are for those who don't have time to buy and sell their assets all the time, okay? And managed funds are what they also call UITFs or Unit Investment Trust Funds, okay? And these are managed by local banks or insurances, okay? Local banks, uh, BDO, BPI, RCBC, uh, Security Bank, they all offer this, okay? And they have different types, okay? And for insurances, these are, are sold by the major insurances all over the country, Sun Life, Phila, um, AXA, etc. Insurances, this have different kinds of products. So sometimes they come with life insurance. Sometimes they're just pure investment products. So it depends on the kind of insurance your agents will sell you, okay? And there are different types of the funds. So first is the balance fund, okay? The balance fund is for the moderately conservative aggressive type because these are balance funds that 50% of it goes to stocks and 50% goes to bonds, okay? And second type is the equity fund, okay? The equity fund is more for the aggressive type. So 100% of which goes to stocks alone. And it can vary whether stocks, you can choose if it's only stocks in the Philippines or stocks in the US or stocks in Asia, you will have the option to choose. And for the conservative investors, we have the fixed income fund and 100% of it goes to funds. When you invest something in the fixed income fund, you already know how much you will receive every year, okay? So for stocks and bonds, which are both individual, these are self-managed. So for stocks, it's a matter, it's you who will decide whether you will buy and sell. You can ask opinion from your analysts or from your brokers or from the banks. They will give you reports on whether to buy or sell stock but it's your own volition to, wed, to do it or not. Unlike in UITFs, it is the bankers who will decide and you have no say whether they will buy or sell the, the stocks. So for stocks, this is more volatile, okay? And the earnings of which will come from its dividends or the income from the companies and the capital gains. Capital gains means if I buy, if I bought a stock last year, 10 pesos, now it's 20 pesos. My capital gain is 10 pesos per stock. So I gained something from the value of the stock. Aside from the dividends that is interest that comes from the stocks. Okay. And there are different markets for the stocks. We have the Philippine Stock Exchange Index or the Philippine Stocks. Um, we also have S&P and NASDAQ from the U.S. And there are different platforms um, here in the Philippines. So we have Call Financial, which is the most popular one. It's just easy. It has a minimum um, opening amount of 5,000. And you can play with it first to, to be able to see how it works or if it's a good chance. Now it's actually a good chance to buy. Um, BPI Securities, it's easy to just transfer money from BPI to BPI Securities, and we have Phil Equity and others. There's a lot, actually. And for bonds, um, it actually has a higher minimum at least 50000 per company. Um, this has fixed income from coupon rates. So usually a company, for example, San Miguel, uh, will say that, okay, I'm issuing a $10 billion fixed income bonds with a rate of 5% per annum. So you will expect that your money will stay there for five years and it will earn 5% every year, fix, okay? And then you will get your 50,000 at the end of the five years, plus the interest that you gain every year. So that's more fix. So how to buy for primary purchase? You have to watch out the news for new issuances. And in the news, they always um, say which banks are involved or which issues the bonds. So you check the, the bank if they offer the bonds. But for example, if BPI is part of the San Miguel, uh, but BDO is not, usually BDO also sells for BPI. So it's just a matter of building relationship with the bank. So what are the keys to consider when investing, okay? So, 
you always have to know yourself, okay, and your risk appetite. And um, you just have to invest in what you are willing to lose, okay? Um, it's always important that, I mean, I think it's a process to know yourself, okay? And myself, I also lost um, some money in investing, I also earned. So it's, it's a game, okay? For stocks, we always recommend to buy low and sell high, okay? A lot of people were discouraged with buying stocks, especially now during the COVID season, because it dropped significantly. The prices of the stocks now is the same price it was in 2010, okay? So imagine the big growth that it had in 2020. And um, me, personally, I, I always believe in the Philippine um, economy. And I think this will grow again to the same level. And if you invest now, and it will grow again in five to 10 years, then you will earn the same as most of the people had in 2010, okay? So do not be sad when stock prices go down. We recommend you to even buy more, okay? And lastly, no matter how small, you have to start early. And don't put all your eggs in one basket. Oops. So for your homework, wow, I was quick. For your homework, we recommend that you create your own budget template. Um, I recommend to create your own budget template. And I also want you to try your client suitability forms to measure your risk assessment. So this risk assessment forms, which I can share also in a Facebook um, post, um, will be able to determine if you're an aggressive, a moderate aggressive or conservative, or a conservative type of investor. So there are a series of questions that you have to answer, and there are points that will connect. So most of the banks have the same types of forms or same types of information to measure um, your risk appetite. And I hope you can share your budget templates with me so we can give you the certificates. So this is an example of a budget template that we have. So I have my budget goals at the upper left. So the budget goals that I set is the 50, 30, 20. And I put there some indication if I achieve it or not. And what's the difference? Because for me, to be fair to the budget template, you have to match the difference in the next payroll, okay? So you have your cash inflows, so your salary, and then you have your cash out outflows. So it depends on what are your needs, what are your wants, parties, eating out, travel, and your savings. So you put portion of it in an emergency fund and you put per portion of it in the investments and you calculate your total outflows and your total ending cash, okay? And I think that's all. And I hope you save well and invest well. You may ask me any questions in the future, or you may ask me questions now if you do have. That's all. Awesome. Thank you, Nina. So um, just to clarify first, so the homework is first to create our own budget template, or will you also be sharing us maybe like a like a sample budget template so that we can yeah. just input other stuff? I can share like a Google Sheets, but then mm -hmm. it won't be editable or else everyone will see your budget. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. for your reference. Well, just make a copy. Yeah, so it's customizable. It depends on you how you want because we believe that, um, I believe that the template should be something of your own. It's something that you should create on your own and that you're something that you should be comfortable with. Okay. Okay. And then the other part is to take the the firing risk assessment personality sort of test that yeah. you, you shared. So maybe um, you'll be posting that later in the group now so we can take it. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's curious with um, what kind of investor are you? Because mm -hmm. personally, I thought I was moderate, aggressive, conservative. But after taking the test, I was actually an aggressive type. So... <laughs> It will surprise you. So it's interesting. Actually, speaking of aggressive, so this is a question coming from me. Um, because when you were discussing like, okay, um, this is what aggressive people do. Um, I, I wanted to ask like, what are risky assets that, you know, probably aggressive investors invest in? 
Okay, so number one is actually stocks because it's very volatile and the value um, can depreciate. Unlike bonds that the value is fixed. Okay, so stocks is number one. Second that you might be familiar with are crypto assets, cryptocurrencies, yeah. so Bitcoin, etc. Um, third will come, of course, are commodities. So that's gold, oil. So risky assets are those that keeps moving or, or volatile assets. Oh, so actually, but then, so I, it's funny that you mentioned like gold and oil as a, like, you know, as a casual person, um, <laughs> like me lang, is there a way to invest in oil or gold right now? Yeah, um, there are platforms. Actually, it, the the type of product, it's called an ETF or exchange traded funds. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. to be able to invest, you need a big amount of money as a minimum investor. So I don't talk about it that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's crazy then to put your money in oil or gold right now. But at least that gives me a good understanding of like what are risky assets. Because I thought like, um, I don't know, parang, I was worried because a risky would be like sort of like real estate. Is real estate um, considered yes, a risky um, investment? Yeah, real estate also is a risky investment. You're correct. So, uh, but like the commodities part, it takes a lot of capital to be able to invest in real estate. So, payang like, for example, I, I, I'm asking this because this is something I really considered when I was, you know, relatively younger. Um, payang like one or two years into working, I was thinking like, is it, is it really worth it to invest in a, for example, condo if if I'm renting or better, but if I buy na lang, for example. What do you think about that? Okay. In my own personal opinion, real estate is the best investment that you will have. Okay. But it takes a lot of capital because um, to be able to invest in a good real estate first, um, it's always good to buy it in cash, not in debt. Okay? Ah, yeah. Because when you buy it in cash, you always have recurring income. You won't have to pay the rent to the bank. Mm. You're just able to get it. Okay. Um, second, uh, real estate, you have to make sure that your location is very good and the developer, if it's a condo, is really, really, really good. Okay. Like we all know what happened to SM Jazz and there, occur, uh, there are um, consequences to the value of the properties there. Okay. So, yun, for me talaga. So now you can start with stocks and bonds and eventually when that earns, you can com- com- you can complete all of the the, the savings or the investment that you have and buy real estate. Because mm. that's the best investment you can give to your family as well. So I guess, firing what I'm taking, especially from that specific slide, no, as as a young um, investor and, and or just like getting into it, palang, risky is not the way to go just yet. Um, if you're just starting. Now, maybe good to start with you, what you mentioned, like, like bonds, possibly those that have a more consistent or reliable return. Yeah, but um, stocks, the man, kasi for me, it's not that risky if you take it to a long term investment. Mm. If you take it as a long term investment, because um, the Philippine economy is continuously growing, unlike the other countries like US or Europe. Uh, we're a developing, uh, we're an emerging country developing country, sorry. So we're, we keep growing. And I think eventually the, the low stock prices now will go up because they're now all undervalued. So as long as if it's a long-term hold, I think stocks can be moderate risky. It's not in the high-risk spectrum that, you know, you'll have to be scared that your money is going to be gone. <laughs> so, um, because... Uh, yeah. Ano eh, what do you call this? Stocks kasi is easy to invest in. That's why um, I recommend for the college students to try stocks already. As young as they are, um, I actually entered call when I was third year in third year college because of uh, um, college org in Ateneo. So they encouraged me. And in 2014, my stocks were very low and I, I doubled the money after two to three years. So that's how just the historical performance of stocks before, okay? And like, 
as long as you put money there from time to time, you'll never know now, oh, I have, ano na pala, I have 20,000 work of stocks. I was just putting in 2,000. Every time I have 2,000, ganun. So, you'll be surprised. Actually, we have a question related to that from, from uh, Kay Atienza. She asked, if you're still a student, how much money is a good start to invest? So, maybe you can tell us more about like when you first um, started investing also, but also your, your personal opinion on this, this question. Okay. Actually, uh, I did the 50-30 rule in college. So, I have a allowance and I usually divide it because that's how my savings work. So, that's the most effective for me to divide it. <laughs> so, I will draw the savings, hold it into my hands, add the money, hold it into my hands and okay, 50% goes to food. And, and food and tricycles and like, okay, 30% goes to my parties or to my weekend hangouts, okay? And 20%, I invest it again in the, I put it again in the bank and I put it directly to call, okay? So it depends on you on how much money you can separate aside and put into um, these platforms, okay? But for call, there's a minimum of 5,000 to be able to invest in, okay? So maybe uh, I'm not sure how strong you are to your parents, but maybe you can ask them to provide the capital <laughs> first. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I do have uh, a friend who, um, I think on one of his birthdays, instead of actually getting a gift, um, nirigaluhan siya ng parents niya ng, ng call. Um, oh, diba? Um, diba? So, could be something you could ask your parents also <laughs> if, if that's um, possible. I, I hope that sort of gives you an idea um, for that key. Um, we have it's another question, which is, at what age is it really good to, is really good to be an investor? Okay. Um, I think the time that you are getting already money you can already start investing. But I guess in the Philippine law, you can start investing at 18. You ah. can ask your parents to open trust accounts when you are young or like below 18. But <clears throat> okay rin yon. But parang feel ko you have more um, authority in the process if you, have already, if you can already open your own accounts. So 18 would be a good age to start. Okay. But then... For example, because for me, I didn't start investing at 18. I actually haven't. I don't think I, I technically have something as, as active as what you describe. Um, I just have like insurance accounts. Um, but that's something I, I started quite quite late. Um, what do you think for, for people who are, let's say, I think, I mean, the general answer I get to this when I ask this to people is like always like, now, now is a good time to invest. <laughs> but then I guess maybe it could also be a discussion on not just what age, but also at what point in life are you able to tell yourself that I'm ready to be, you know, an investor. An investor. Or, yeah. I think if you have the self um, assurance and self confidence to be able to invest for the future, then it's the best time for you to invest, okay? Because, you know, um, when you start thinking of the future, I mean, you have to start of the future now. Oh, that's where the now comes from, diba? Right? And when you start thinking of the future, that's when you start, okay, I think I will need money in the future, so I will set aside a portion of my, of my allowance to this, okay? So that's the best time, okay? It's all, um, it's all about yourself. Because if you're not willing yourself to invest in something, then it won't be a commitment. Okay, and in investing, you need commitment. Okay, um, that's very helpful also. Because like, and I think with seeing, uh, I don't know then how to interpret. Because some of the, um, your results know what kind of investor are you. Because for example, when you found out now you were you were a bit on more on the aggressive side of investing. Did you that that change your investing behavior after you found out that you're you're a bit more of an aggressive investor? Uh well I still have a balanced portfolio, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I started looking at riskier assets. So I did Bitcoin. A part of my life I did Bitcoin. I was lucky enough to exit before it crashed. Um 
but I think if that if it crashed and my money was still stuck there, then I would have changed the, my profile to moderate, aggressive, conservative. So this form should not be taken as seriously as it should or as strictly as it should. Um, it's really you should ask yourself if you're willing to risk it because the profiles can change anytime. And it's always about your willingness, number one, your willingness, and second, your ability to invest, okay? So not every one of us have good, uh, have um, bigger allowance, or I mean, some of us have only fixed allowances or fixed salary to be able to provide to the needs and wants and nothing for the, the investment. So those are the two key things that um, as an investor, you should think about, the willingness and the ability. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nina. I mean, um, I super get it because like for a time, I wasn't thinking about any of it at all because I keep I kept thinking that, you know what, I guess the willingness wasn't there even though I had the ability, mm-hmm. which is, yeah. you know, looking back is, is not very wise of me to do, but because the willingness what to do it wasn't there. Um, even mm-hmm. though I had extra, I would use the extra na lang for for my other for my other luho. Um, yeah, but you know why? Because you know, people don't know where to invest it in. That's why insurances are very successful. Because the agents are very hands-on, diba? They tap you directly. So you don't know you already have five insurances while the other platforms or the other ways to invest are there. Okay, so for me, for insurances, insurances, eh, well, insurances, you just limit it to two accounts, okay? Mm. And like some, you invest it in other um platforms where you will actually earn money. <laughs> oh, so, Payang, are you saying that the insurances aren't really um gonna be able to give me a lot of money down the line? It will, naman, but if you do the numbers, eventually, if you know how to value and stuff, um, you will only get the value of your money. I I don't want to be morbid, morbid, but you will only get more than the amount of money you put in if you actually die, mm-hmm. while you have the the insurance. So, um, you know, these are capitalist <laughs> insurances or capitalist. So it's good to have just in case, because um, insurance no man is to guarantee something. If something happens in the future, it will guarantee that you will get something. So it's good to have one or two then, but the rest, you, you can invest it in other products that are available in the market. And um, you can't, you don't hesitate to ask people around. Most of the bankers know um, a lot of the platforms. You can also ask me. I don't mind if you send me um, um, PMs to ask if I, what platforms do I recommend and um, what risk do I have in investing in this and that, etc. I think that's very great because I my takeaway from that is like okay, you know, partnering up with these companies or this these insurance companies are good if like you really want that sort of security for yourself. But being able to take um your own investing into your own hands to be able to say that hey, this is where I want my money to go and this is the sort of return that I expect is sort of you know gaining more control about how, what happens to your money. Um, which yeah. I think is great, especially if like for sessions like this, for example, you you understand how it's really supposed to work. And so that gives mm-hmm. you a bit more power to to practice what you know um and learn on your own and maybe um yeah, you can apply your own discard to it. That's true. For insurance, um, you don't know how they compute it, but they just tell you, okay, in ten years you'll get the full amount of one million. That's it, the So in the middle Malemo, in the middle of the 10 years, you need the money big luck. Wala, you won't have any chance to withdraw. Or if you are given the chance to withdraw, it will be less than what you actually put in. So, lugi ka. So, yun. That is, that is super, super duper helpful for me, Nina. Um, guys, uh, if you have any more questions for Nina, please go ahead. This is your chance to to get um, an answer from her um, if you're too shy later on to to reach out to her. Um, please ask it now. Maybe someone else in the group also had the same question and, and that will be good, Paira. Nidan tayo 
um, makulit kay Nina later. Um, <laughs> napaulit <laughs> ulit yung questions natin. Um, but yes, please, if you have any more questions, um, please do. So we we have a comment actually. So it's not necessarily a question, but someone said that I really want to invest, but I want to know more details regarding investing. I'm a student who has small allowance, and I really want to discover what kind of investor I am. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I recommend you to take the form just to see, just to gauge what kind of investor you are. So part of this test is actually the ability to be able to invest. Okay, so. Um, that will give you a good um, idea of where to invest and what you can invest on. Because usually the UITFs have a small minimum balance or account opening. So that's actually the best way to start investing for now. If you don't have 5,000 to open the, the stock account. All right. I guess maybe to close, if we don't have any more questions, um, I wanted to pull a bit of on the thread of what you mentioned a while ago. Na now is the best time to to invest, um, <laughs> especially now the stock prices are so low. Um, do you have anything more to add to that? Because now after like what you discussed, especially that tidbit na the stock prices now are like what it was when it was 2010. I was like, okay, this is my chance to have ball um, because I didn't start early. Uh, is that something I can start like literally right now? If I go to call, I can start an account immediately. Is that something that's possible? Uh, I haven't checked if you can do online opening of accounts online. Okay, but um, yeah, it's really good to open now. So if you can't open online and call, but how you can do it in the big banks, because I know some of the banks, the big banks are can open accounts online, like Union Bank. You can open online accounts in Union Bank. So maybe you can start with UITF to be able to take advantage of the prices. I also recommend to invest only in the top stocks. Okay, to be mm -hmm. conservative. To, to be ano naman, not that aggressive. So the top stocks would be SM, Ayala, okay? and like the banks. Um, San Miguel is also good. So the big, the big companies. Talaga. Um, if you're the really, really, really aggressive type, and then that's and when you already know how to handle your stock, then that's the time you invest in other types of companies or the smaller stocks. Okay? And you get bigger returns from there. But for now, you can always opt to choose uh, to invest in the top stocks. And you will get a high return as well because of the market now. All right. Maybe, so for that, um, you also recommend that if I do buy now, I hmm. have to play the long game for it. Like maybe we yeah. a couple of um, Actually, we don't know how. We don't know what's going to happen because COVID is not yet done. Okay? So there's a chance that recession will be will happen. Recession will happen. So recession means that the GDP growth is negative for two quarters straight. Okay? So first quarter is automatically... Well, we don't know the numbers yet until May 7. So we take, we foresee it's a negative. Okay? If it, if it happens again in the second quarter, then there's a recession. And recession usually triggers the market to go down, okay? Since we don't know what's going to happen, um, if you're going to buy stocks now and hold it for a long term, then that's safe. But if you're going to buy stocks now and sell it at the end of the year, then that's when it becomes a little bit risky. Yeah. All right. That is very sound advice. I will keep that in <laughs> mind um, as I contemplate on whether I'm gonna get into stocks during this during this lockdown. Um, yeah. But if we don't have any more questions, then I guess we have a really short session today, which is great because I need to catch mass at six. Um, but um, yeah, so if if you guys don't have any more questions, Nina will be posting in the group shortly after this video is done um, and we will give you a chance to earn your certificates by doing like a simple budget sheet um, and taking the um, tests that, that Nina is going to link to us later. So thank you so much, Nina, for, for giving us thank you. a bit of your time on this Sunday. And for those who are still on the video, 
I wanted to gi give you guys a reminder that tomorrow's session for the Lee of Learning Challenge is again at 5 p.m. And we will be learning from the co-founder and COO of Bihasa. So wow. Bihasa um, is an e-learning startup as well, but they've been uh, a bit of on the background of like teachers like me, like Mina, and, and all of your other content creators. Um, they have been helping us like doing streams like this, um, and they will explain that tomorrow. But what they will be teaching us is how to make our own learning plan. So I know the title is like how to make a learning plan, but it's really how to make a learning plan for yourself. So while you're not too busy with anything right now, maybe it is also a good way to, to plan out how you're going to learn for the rest of this time that you're not, um, you're not maybe too busy with anything, if that's something that you'd want to be able to do. Or, or for those who have been participating in our learning challenges and any of the topics are, are suddenly very interesting to you. For example, Nina's talk you found very interesting on investing and you want to learn more about that. Um, and then so Mark, the COO of Bihasa, will help us tomorrow um, to craft our own learning plan if there are any topics at all that you want to go deeper on and learn. So I will see you all tomorrow again at 5 p.m. Bye. Happy Sunday.